are keeping some things a mystery. At least there's some mystique they're still engaging in in that band. In in the day and age we're in now, everybody is posting online what they had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and every single bit about their lives. So the, the so it is kind of refreshing that there's a band that's still keeping up some sort of mystery and mystique and keeping their fans talking, even if it's something like that. I think that that's actually pretty cool. We don't have a lot of that anymore in the in in music. No, everything we don't. is so out there. God, remember, I mean, for people old enough to remember, if you grew up in the 70s and you remember the the mystique about Kiss was unbelievable, you know, who they were behind the makeup. And for younger people, you may not realize that that was an enormous component of what they were about and the whole mystery about them. They were never seen without the makeup. Nobody knew who they were. You would open up a newspaper and you'd see a, a photo of the guy from the babies uh, on the street in New York. And they'd say, that's Paul Stanley without makeup. That was, was Were they guys in other well-known bands? Were they unknown people? What did they look like? There was That was a huge deal with Kiss from seven, about 1979, 1980 back. And... Uh, yeah, of course, that all went away when they took their makeup off, and now it's not even a factor. But very few bands have any sort of real level of mystique anymore, and it's kind of cool when they do. You know who was the last real rock star to embody that type of mystique? Going back to the 90s, Manson. Marilyn I was Manson. just going to say, I agree with you. That would have been my answer, too. Because I remember back being in school when the two running rumors were that he was, A, the kid from the sidekick from the Wonder Years, grown up. And then the urban legend that he actually had one of his ribs removed so he could so he could do, blow do, himself. Yeah, so I was going to say I was going <laughs> to use the word fellatio, but no, we'll just go right there and say he wanted to blow himself. There's still people that believe that that he had ribs removed in order to do that. Uh, yeah, and yeah, man, there was a there was a cool mystique about Manson. There still is to some degree. I think Manson is still absolutely kept up the rock star persona. I can tell you this with Manson, he. Uh, yeah, because Manson's one of these guys, like, when he's on the down low, he's on the down low. And you don't hear from him or see him much at all. And then when he's got something to promote, he'll pop up and he'll do something for, you know, do the necessary press. Obviously, he did my show, The L.A. Invasion, with Rob Zombie because they were going out on tour together. But otherwise, he's pretty pretty on the down low. And, and, and uh, even if you follow him on social media, every once in a while, you'll see him post some stuff. Actually... Uh, posted something for a great cause the other day. One of the former bass players in the band is battling cancer and had a GoFundMe page set up, and Manson posted about that to try to help him out, which I thought was very nice. But yeah, Manson still carries that mystique. I can tell you this, when he was on this show and he came in with Rob Zombie to the to the Rainbow, I don't know, was it probably six months ago now? Uh, you know, there's there's a there's still a buzz and a presence about that guy when he goes into a a, a public place. And so he's he's managed to maintain that rock star persona and I and good on him for doing it. I've always felt that that was a big part of what he introduced back into music when he came on the scene in the 90s. And apparently a new record coming soon as well that he's working on and has worked on with Shooter Jennings. I am looking forward to hearing what the two of those guys will produce. Yeah, the last couple Manson records he worked with Tyler Bates who is known for doing a lot of movie scoring. And now uh, is changed gear to work with Shooter Jennings. And that should be a very interesting collaboration. I'm also very much looking forward to hearing what they end up with there. And for people who don't know, Shooter did the, the Duff McKagan record, right? Yeah, produced it and was the backing band yes. as well. So he certainly dabbles in rock. Now, Duff's album is a very stripped down sort of singer-songwriter record. Obviously, Manson is a, a different sort of thing, but... Who knows what he'll do with Manson? Manson's quite a chameleon. He could change all the time. So could get I doubt we'll get the more industrial side of Manson, but we'll see. Anything else, Ed? Well, you know, you brought up KISS. Uh so a Canadian rock blogger and interviewer Mitch LaFon was talking to Doc McGee um as KISS is now back out on the road for another leg of their ongoing farewell tour, uh, with David Lee Roth opening up for them. So uh, Mitch was talking to Doc about if this proposed, because as it stands now, July 17th, 2021 in New York City is supposed to be the last KISS show 
ever. And he asked Doc, do you really mean ever, ever? And according to Doc, he says, I doubt things will ever change, but shit happens all the time. But from what we believe today, that the date that we're talking about is the end of the road, certainly for Gene and Paul. So maybe insinuating that Kiss may continue in some form uh, sans Gene and Paul beyond that date. Well, they've talked about that for years. I, I don't. I don't really know. Um, and and credit to Mitch, who who's a who does a podcast out of Canada, and and, and uh, he got a lot of traction on this, which is wonderful for him. But really, I mean, it's been talked about for years. They've the, the band has said consistently for years that they will continue putting Kiss out there with and replace themselves. I mean, my God, that that news is been around forever i guess because it's coming close to when they claim they're going to end and it's sort of reaffirmed by the manager it became a big thing but i don't know what rock people have been under to not know that that they the band has said that they've all said that we'll replace ourselves anyone can be in kiss and i don't i think all of that's bs personally i mean i'm not saying bs in the sense that they can't and won't do it i'm saying I don't, I don't buy that sales pitch, but they'll do it. Absolutely. They'll, they'll look at this as a franchise and put up a big show and be the guys behind it, pulling the strings and, and replace themselves. They had pitched a reality show. Some people up at VH1 told me a while ago where they wanted to do a reality show to find their replacements. So this has been knocked around forever. They backed down from talking about it in the interest of selling this farewell tour. But now with an end date, allegedly an end date announced, the, um, they may start talking about it again. I don't know. The, it's all about the sell. It's all about the timing and the sell of what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. Well, speaking of the sell and the timing of it, there's also some buzz, some murmurs of an upcoming Kiss biopic, but I was talking to our fearless boss, Roger Coletti, and he says that's nothing new either, that there's been talk of a Kiss biopic for years, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think any major band with a major story, I don't think there isn't talk on a biopic on all of them. When you look at the business that Queen did with that movie, it's a copycat industry. They're all, everyone is going to try to do it. You don't think Ozzy's pitching a biopic. You don't think Kiss, you don't think, I mean, every band with major followings and major stories is going to try to do a biopic. They're going to shop a biopic. They're going to pitch one or be pitched an idea for one. But uh, whether it comes to fruition or not, we'll see. So yeah, no, all of that has just been out there forever. And, and, and who knows? I mean, the Kiss would be a great subject for a biopic if it's done well. There is going to be this Kiss documentary. I can tell you, again, this falls in the, I don't know how much I should and can say on the air bit. Be careful, man. But I had a long convert. Well, not, I had a pretty good conversation with Ace Freely last night. Ace called me to talk to me about some stuff, and we had a good chat last night about some things. But, uh, uh, and I'll... <laughs> I'm not going to, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot, my gosh. All right. I'm going to leave it all alone, but I, I know, I know a lot of stuff and, uh, not about the doc. Well, I know about the documentary. Cause as I said the other day, the guy who produces it has been on me to try to get him to get ACE to participate. And ACE has his reasons why at this point he has not participated, whether that changes or not. I don't know, but you know, ACE and I talked about some other things and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, keep that conversation private since it was off the air and it was a private phone call. But whenever he wants to come on and say how he's feeling about some stuff, he's more than welcome to do so. I tell you what, but I'll that is that, that documentary is a real thing. That, that is the one thing on all the kiss stuff that I can tell you is 100% in production. I've, I've seen clips. I know what they're doing. I know what they're going for. I know it's, it's, it looks like it's going to be very well done. I do not know if Ace and Peter were, will participate in it. And, uh, you know, I do know that they've, you know, the company producing it, A&E, they have access to the quote unquote archives and all the footage and what have you. So it should be great when it's done. I hope all the surviving members of the band are represented uh, accurately and properly and respectfully in it and have a part in it. But I have nothing to do with it whatsoever beyond the fact that, like I said, they reached out to me about, working on 
really wanting Ace's involvement. And ultimately, I mean, he's an adult. It's his his decision what he decides to do there. But he, but he and I talked about some other things that were pretty <laughs> pretty interesting. And um, again, I'll leave that private unless he wants to come on and talk about it, which he'll do at some point. I'm sure we'll get him on here very soon with a, a bit of an update on what's going on in his.